Hey, it's Mario here and in this video you're going to learn how to achieve any goal. I'm going to give you a five-step process that is a proven process that I've applied to my own life, to lives of my clients when it comes to mastering things like regular meditation, not missing workouts, mastering your nutrition, things like turning your life completely around. I mean, all these goals that we have and often we have a lot of these goals, you can achieve with this five-step method. It's a very, very simple process. So let's start from the top. Step one is limit the amount of goals that you want to achieve. And I'm not saying that you can't achieve all those goals that you want to achieve, but I'm saying that you can do it at the same time, especially if you're starting from scratch. I mean, we want to get it all at once. And you know, I know, man, I mean, I'm ambitious. I want to achieve everything. I want to crush it in all areas of my life at once. But I understand that there's finite resources at play. I know my motivation, my willpower, like all these things fluctuate. I can't dedicate, there's time and energy at stake here. I can't dedicate my equal attention to everything. And it's simply that old quote, you know, the hunter that tries to catch two rabbits catches none. You know, that's sim that is completely true. I see guys failing at this over and over again. They try to do 10 different goals, improve their life, completely turn it around by doing everything at once. And it's just, not gonna play out, at least not in the long run. Maybe in the short run, you get a little bit of success, but then you burn out and just all goes back to your old habits and you just go back to your old ways. You don't really move much forward. So my recommendation from my experience, my, my own life and working with clients, I would say three big goals, bigger goals per year. It's like the max, you know, above that and there's no way, I, I haven't met anybody who actually achieved more than three big goals. And I mean really big life-changing things. And even with that, it does require prioritization. So you have to prioritize which is the biggest goal, like what is the things that is the highest priority, let's say starting a business, then if it's your mastering your health and if it's also dating, for example, those will be on the back burner. For those, you can actually just do that 15, 20% that will generate 70, 80% of results kind of thing. But for the main one, it's your dedication, it's your thing that you really put in the maximum effort and uh, that's the thing you really focus on the most, right? So. Even there, the, the second and the third goal will have to suffer a little bit and that is something you have to be willing to accept, that there's a limitation and you can achieve it, but it will just take a little bit of more time and that is just the way it is, right? So prioritize, pick the three goals or one goal or whatever you wanna do, but make sure that you make your choice and do that and limit the number of goals. Another great strategy that I've actually used myself is actually dedicate a month for a specific habit that you wanna build up or a specific goal, right? So for smaller things like starting meditation, you could say like, okay, August is the meditation month, right? So starting August 1st, I'm gonna meditate uh, up until like the end of August and I'm gonna make it a habit, right? So it's kind of like you dedicate a certain month for a specific goal and that tends to work pretty well for smaller habits. Things like, okay, I wanna drink a glass of water after I wake up, you know, and then you make that, okay, that's gonna be the month of July. You know, that month of July is gonna be the month of drinking a glass of water after waking up. And it really works well. Things like month of reading, you pick what are gonna be the two books or three books or four books or whatever your capacity is, one book that month, and you just say, okay, this month is this, uh, it's a reading month. And it works really well. So that's one way as well to kind of limit the number of goals and to focus your attention and your energy on a thing that you can achieve. The second step of this five step process is work with a strategy that you know will generate results. So putting in your time and effort into something that is not proven, that you didn't research as well, or something that is just simply not a, a good model that will generate results, it's just a waste of time. And I see a lot of guys, I mean, trying to wing it in terms of weight loss, in terms of gym, in terms of fitness, they just take on some random stuff and they just do random things, they get random results and then they blame everything and they say, well, oh, dude, this didn't work and it's not for me, right? Take a strategy that really works and the fastest way to hack this is actually hire a coach or a mentor in any area of your life. I mean, let's say you wanna master dating, you wanna check out my buddies at RSD, you know, they're crushing it. They will teach you exactly what you need to do and you simply have to follow step by step and you will achieve because it's a working strategy. Same for business. Find someone that has a business model that generates results so you know that your effort is put in the right place. In fitness, you can find a coach. I mean, you can watch videos, you can do your own research, but it's important to find a working strategy, something that's based on actual evidence and proof that works. That means that your effort is not gonna be wasted. The third component of this is super, super important, and that is mastering the repetitions. So every goal you wanna achieve in life is actually a set of repetitions. So that's how I look at it 
And let's give an example. Let's say you want to squat uh, 225 for 10, right? 10 reps, 225 pounds. You're starting from an empty bar. Well, to get from an empty bar, which is about 45 pounds, about 100 pounds, 135 pounds, probably gonna take you about half a year and about a thousand reps, right? So you have to put in those thousand reps to get from point A to point B. And let's say the goal to get from 135 to 185 is another thousand repetitions that you have to put in across the next three, four months. Let's say that and then from getting to 185 for 10 to 225 for 10 is another thousand repetitions that over the course of next four, five, six months that you have to do. So it's really like a goal, any goal is, you can look at it as a, on a continuum of repetitions, how many reps do I actually have to put in to achieve this goal? And here's the good thing about this. It's really not about the result itself, it's just about putting in those repetitions and getting a little bit better, right? So you can look at any goal as a series of repetitions and if you can't really master those repetitions, if you can't master the consistency of putting in those repetitions, it doesn't even matter what the result is, right? If you don't master the consistency of putting in the reps, the goal, it doesn't matter, the result doesn't matter and this really shifts your focus to look into the process, you know, the room wasn't built in, in a day, but they were laying bricks every single day. It's, I love that quote from James Clear. That is how you want to look at it. You know, it's, it's a continuum of repetitions and it's simply how many repetitions you put in, that's how far you're going to get and that is how you can view any goal out there. The fourth component here, super, super important, is measure your progress. If your goal is not measurable, you're wasting your time. Whatever, whatever isn't measurable, you can't really manage it and it's usually a waste of time. You can look at anything in your, like someone asked me just recently when I did a talk, and how do you measure meditation? How do you measure meditation? Because it's just such a vague concept. How do you know that you've improved from one session to another session? Well, it's even with meditation, which is a little bit of woo-ish, you can still see how much do I have between the thoughts? <laughs> Am I getting a less of those thoughts, right? Am I becoming more focused? Am I becoming more grounded faster in a meditation? I can still measure it. In terms of gym, it's actually quite easy. Am I moving forward? Am I adding weight? Am I adding reps? What am I doing, right? Is it moving me forward? In terms of your business, if your goal is to, let's say, start a blog, how many posts am I making per week? How many viewers am I getting to my blog every single week? Is it moving forward? Is it getting better? If not, make changes. Measuring your progress is absolutely critical. That's why I'm a big fan of my fitness pal when it comes to your diet and with tracking your body weight in general. I love tracking, I love measuring, I'm, I'm engineer background and I think this is the absolute key to successfully achieving any goal in your life is really making sure that that goal is measurable and find things that are measurable that are related to that goal and you will you will achieve that goal for sure. The fifth, the final thing is uh, something that I like, to, uh, I like to mention a lot from BJ Fogg from Stanford and he said, design your life for laziness. What does this really mean? Well, look, let's say you wanna get rid of a bad habit. Let's say you have a bad habit of coming back from your work and you sit down and you watch TV. Every time it happens, you wanna get rid of watching TV and you wanna kind of get out of that habit and wanna move into, let's say, a habit of reading more books. Well, if I walk into your house and if all the chairs and, and everything is pointed to that TV, what is that environment telling me? Well, that environment is designed for me to watch TV and the remote is right there. Well, instead, why don't you just take the TV, unplug it and put it in a closet and put the remote with it and put a book on the table there. And what does that environment tell me? When you go back from work, if you still wanna watch TV, you can just go to the closet, you can simply take the TV out, you can plug it in, you can start watching TV. But if you actually do this, you will notice that just that extra little bit of friction that you've added, I mean, it takes probably like three minutes to take the TV out of the closet and put it back up and, and just uh, plug it in and start watching it. But that extra friction toward that bad habit, because your mind is so lazy and it's predictably lazy, same as mine is, will prevent you from doing that bad habit. It's the same with how I got rid of my addiction to checking Instagram on my phone. I just moved Instagram from the home screen, disabled push notifications and put it on the third screen in a folder. So if I actually want to check Instagram, I can. It's still on the phone. I, I just have to scroll a couple more times, go into the folder and do all of that. But I've reduced checking Instagram multiple times per day to almost checking a couple of times a week because my brain is so lazy and I've designed my environment for laziness to make sure that it pushes toward a good habit and my Evernote is on the front page of the home screen where it's actually my work and topics for videos and research and gym work and tracking my food, that is on the home screen. So I make the easy thing to do, the, actually the good thing 
And the, uh, the bad thing is actually very hard to do. I mean, I make it a little bit harder. I'm not gonna delete the app at all. But I'm just gonna add a little bit of friction. It's same for your house. Let's say you're designing to stick to your diet. If your fridge is full of vegetables and if you're, if you're just your entire house, your tables and everything have fruit on it, there's no junk food in the house, what are you gonna do when you get a craving? You're gonna eat that fruit, you're gonna eat those vegetables. If there's no processed food around, if you're gonna, if you really crave processed food, you can get into the car and drive to a nearby 7-Eleven and buy food, but you will see that most, 90% of the time, most of the time I would say, you will not do that because your brain is simply lazy. Your brain is gonna say, well, I might as well go for that vegetable, even though it might not be the same thing, it's there and that's why it's better. And same for your fruits and same for gym. I mean, just get into a gym that is nearby, even if it's a little bit of a worse of a gym, but if it's like five minutes walking or five minutes driving, it's probably a better idea because you reduce the friction toward doing that good habit if you're struggling with maintaining consistency with that. Design for laziness, design for your lazy brain to make the default choice, the good choice, and make the bad behavior, the behavior that you wanna minimize, add some friction in front of that. Make it a little bit harder. Put that bag of chips in your garage and you're gonna see how many times you're gonna actually go for it just because it takes an extra 20 seconds to actually go there. It's a super, super powerful concept. One final bonus point I would say on achieving your goals uh, on top of these five steps is keep your goals to yourself, man. Like according to the research from what I've seen in the studies, when we tell our, our friends and everybody on Facebook about our goals, we actually get a ton of validation and then our brain seems to be satisfied with that validation and we don't even put in the hard work because we already got the validation for it. And that is simply a case that I see with a lot of people and they say like, oh, I wanna lose 50 pounds and everybody's like, yay, you know, you're gonna lose 50 pounds, but rarely people follow through. Be the person who's actually putting in the work and all of a sudden people start, oh yeah, have you been losing weight? You don't tell anybody about the goal, right? Keep it to yourself, let the work do its thing, right? Let the work be an example of uh, what you wanna achieve and what are you achieving on a day-to-day -day basis and coming closer to your goal. Uh, let me know in the comments below, how do you feel like about these five steps? Are you gonna apply this and how are you gonna apply this toward goals in your life? Aside from that, make sure to hit that subscribe button below to support the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.